My name is Ju. You can find me online as Arkham with a four. Um, I'm Italian. He says so. I don't think you believe it. Um, it's, it's okay. I've been living here in London for the past two years. In my free time, I love to climb. I think you don't believe any of that, so as a proof, there's a picture of me climbing. <laughs> of course, you can tell it's me, because there's a label. Um, so um, I'm here today for two reasons. And the first reason is that I don't really know Elixir nor Erlang very well. And the second reason is that I don't know embedded systems at all. And I'm sure at this point the organizers are starting to regret the decision of accepting this talk, but I'm on the stage already, so what are you gonna do? <laughs> um, and I'm just a web developer. I was born a Ruby developer, and it's sort of like when you're in the Marines, you're like Semper Fi, like you're always a Ruby developer. Um, lately I've been doing a lot of JavaScript, so front-end MVC and this sort of things. So I know now you're asking like, oh, why is this dude like here on the stage? And the reason is that I mostly enjoy programming. And by programming, I mean a sort of physical and mental activity. <laughs> and after all these years working as a developer, as a web developer, I felt the need to do something in the real world. So I felt like, I don't know if this belief, um, I got to this belief after all these years working in JavaScript, but I felt that as engineers, we like to get lost into a lot of layers of abstraction. Um, and uh, I thought it was just me at some point, and then I figured out like some tweets on the internet, and there's like this dude who can't really like use grunt, and I think he's famous in some sort of way. Um, anyway, um, there's this writer which I really like, which is Jorge Luis Borges, and uh, he wrote this quote about a labyrinth of labyrinths. And it's a labyrinth which would encompass the past and the future, in some way, even the stars, and really reminded me of the NPM architecture. Um, <laughs> I I'm not kidding. Like, he <laughs> Only recent versions of NPM made sure that if you had the same version of a dependency, they would not get like, installed like, in multiple copies, even I mean, yeah, that's really mind-boggling. But anyway, um, I wanted to do something simple, something as simple as switching on a light bulb. And by the way, um, how many engineers do you think it takes to change light bulb? So um, I have three for you today. Um, the first one is it's impossible because they're all trying to design the perfect light bulb. The second one is one, precisely the only one who bothered to read the Lightbulb's fine manual. And three, I'll drink a little bit, you can read. <laughs> okay, so why Elixir? <laughs> and well, I'm in the Elixir conference, I don't think I need to explain to all of you why I, like, I think Elixir is awesome. So I just want. And the second question would be, why a Raspberry Pi? As we've seen, we can use so many different devices nowadays, and they're all like quite cheap. And the reason why I use the Raspberry Pi is because I wanted like something to play with, and I felt like I could just like get the most value for my money. So I just compared the different options out there, and I pulled out the specs for an Arduino Zero and a Raspberry Pi 3. And I think like the difference is pretty massive. So on one hand side we have something which is like rather like single purpose. On the other hand side we have a real computer. And it's real. It's not a joke. This is real. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the Raspberry Pi, it's here, I have it running, and unfortunately I couldn't figure out a way of like streaming something. Uh, like using my phone as a camera or something like that. Apparently the technology isn't there yet. So you'll just have to trust me that it's working, it's connected, I'll show you something afterwards. Um, also something which we'll find really interesting afterwards is that the Raspberry Pi has these 40 pins. And these 40 pins can like give power, can connect to ground, can be used to either as outputs or inputs so that you can program your Raspberry. 
So what next? Uh, I bought myself a board, and then I did the thing that most reasonable people in the audience would do. So I just like started going on Amazon.co.uk and started buying all the sensors I could find. <laughs> Was that funny? Um, anyway, so if you see, uh, I'm not like in any way affiliated with some founder, but I really think their package is awesome because the thing on the bottom, when you open it up, you have these sort of things. No one is talking, that's amazing. Um, so yeah, there's like pretty some cool, really, really cool sensors, right? Um, so I thought, are you still busy reading? I'll drink some more. Okay, I'll put, I'll put up the slides afterwards and you can read like all these things. Um, so what could I build? And I think I have a reputation for building always like the silliest things. Um, a couple of uh, years ago I was playing with Sonic Pi, which is a Ruby program which you can use to write music. And I used it to build a Nokia ringtone converter and player and some sort of stuff. So I thought, well, like, what, was, what is the, the silliest thing I could ever build using this, all these sensors? And I remember there was a movie from 1996 with Tom Cruise in it. Yes, yes, Mission Impossible. Also, wait for a punchline. Yeah, <laughs> good. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, it's about Tom Cruise trying to break in into the CIA, and there's this high security vault, and they have lasers, they have temperature sensors, they have vibration sensors, they have noise sensors. So whenever the room is locked, he had to go like to overcome all these obstacles. And you can't really see it in this picture, but on the top right, there's actually the name of the security system. So I use some CSI magic there, and it's actually called intrusion countermeasures, which I, I thought was a bit weird as a choice, especially given that this display should, is only useful when the room is locked, and supposedly there's no one in the room when the room is locked. <laughs> But anyway, I mean, um, designers, right? Um, <laughs> so um, I could rename this talk to Building Mission Impossible Intrusion Countermeasures in Elixir on a Raspberry Pi. But I didn't think this was like, exciting enough or was sort of like giving away like, all the punchlines. So I just like, call, called it like running Elixir on a Raspberry Pi. Um, and we have these features, right? And I don't think there's anything in this list which isn't awesome. And there's like laser beams, noise detection, vibration awareness, a temperature sensor. So let's do it. Um, OK, I'm just going to open my terminal here. Um, there's something which I have here connected. This is called a USB TTL cable. It's one hand is um, USB and it exposes the Raspberry as a serial interface. So when I connect it to my computer, I'll be able to do something like screen, uh, use uh, CU USB serial 115200. And I'm logged into the Raspberry now. And it's up. I've, I've only did, uh, maybe I can show you. I, I took a picture so that you guys could uh, understand a little bit better. So uh, here, the Raspberry Pi, um, here's uh, like the pins, which you can see here. There's just like one of those old cables you use to connect hard, hard drives. Um, and it's just a way to easily be able to tell which is the pin I'm connecting to so they don't make a mistake on stage and I fry up the board. Um, what you see here is a small uh, analog to digital converter. So Tatiana uh, was talking before that like most sensors are analog. So since I want to use this information as like a programming device, I just have this little chip which does the conversion between analog and digital. And also it connects like to the PI using this, two, um, this special bus which is called uh, I2C bus. Um, and actually I shouldn't have put like these two sensors like down there because they're not here in the board right now. I just ran a small hardware check before the talk. Um, so cool, let's try to log in. Oh wow, that's unexpected. Let's try again. Mm, I probably have to reset my terminal. No, let's try again. Um, reset.
Oh, no, no. I think I did something wrong, maybe. Or maybe not. Let me try doing this. Oh, no, it's back. PI, <laughs> I was about to kill it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's how, how much patience I have with these things. Um, so here, basically, what you can, I've installed um, Elixir, so I can just like run IEX. It's actually running on a device, which I think is quite impressive. But it makes sense considering what they showed uh, about like the capabilities of it. It's like a real computer. It's not a toy, right? And if I get out of this, like I have like real like like this is Raspbian running on an SD card, and it's a, like it has even like a graphical interface, which I'm not using right now, but you could. Um, so basically, what you would do now is just like to run like mix new and your project, and everything will work. Uh, let me just like run like test, test. Um, so it'll work and basically you go inside of it and what you would do is to change the mix file and you'd add um, this library which is called Elixir Ale which is just um, an Elixir wrapper around an Erlang library which is called Erlang Ale. And you just do something like this, and then you do run like mix steps get. Uh, since I couldn't really connect it to the internet, I had to use a backup, which I luckily made, which is called back. And inside this, uh, there's just like the same thing I've showed you before. So there's like Elixir Ale. And actually, if I show you, um, uh, there's like a little bit of, um, I've called this app countermeasures. And there's a def, def modules, countermeasures. So now I'll just um, open it up. Countermeasures, I'll say use uh, application, def start, you can ignore this, do. And uh, maybe, can I ask if someone in the audience wants to assist me in this? No? Yes? Someone? Keith? Diego. Yes. <laughs> Um, basically, <laughs> don't ask me to type. <laughs> no, no, no. Basically, just um, prove that I'm not like um, a hoax. That actually, like stuff is happening here. I just want you as a human mirror, basically. Okay. Um, so um, I have here I have a laser emitter. On the back of the laser emitter, there's some blue tack. Um, I use this just like to connect, like to make sure that the laser doesn't move on the board. Um, maybe you can move it a little bit back. Cool. And now there's like two cables here. One is the tension, so I can just connect it to the tension. And one is the signal. So I'll connect it to um, a certain pin, which is GPIO 17 pin. Okay. And here, uh, I've used this uh, GPIO, which is part of the Elixir AL library. And you can just like start a link to a certain pin, number 17, tell it the, the mode you want the um, pin to connect to, which is output. And in this way, you'll be able to do stuff like this. So write laser um, zero. Then maybe you can sleep for 500 uh, milliseconds. Um, and then one more. And we can turn it off. So now if I run ix-mix, you'll be able to see that like, the laser turns on. Oh, no, <laughs> it's currently defined. Population. Uh, um, model countermeasures, no. What does this mean? Help? <laughs> let's, let's crowdsource this. Oh, no, OK. I have to remove the backup because. Um, you can't have it twice. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Now it works, I hope. Yes. Is it crashed again? There's a, no, there's a laser there. Oh, no, cool. It said, uh, could not start application countermeasures, return the bad value, OK. This is because if we want to use uh, application, we have to return a certain value from the start function, and this uh, value is usually something like this. So now if I run this again, the process won't crash anymore. It will still uh, on, off again. Yes, worked. We need a smoke machine now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, 
I, I thought it was pretty cool. Like the, and the first time you do this, you feel like uh, Dr. Frankenstein. You're like, yes, it's live. And I thought that was pretty cool, but what if I had a photo resistor, which could like, measure the amount of light which shines like, through this little surface? And there's also some blue tack on the back of this. So if I carefully align the beams, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, okay, and then I need to connect this to the digital. Um, oh no, oh, I can do that later. To the digital to to the analog to digital converter. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, I'll just kill the app now. Lib uh, countermeasures. So here, um, I'll just like keep the, uh, the thing on. So I don't really need to turn it off now. And right, what I'll do now is do something really similar. But since the sensors are not using the GPIO pins, I won't use GPIO. I use uh, I2C, which is this bus I was talking about. And you just need to do something I2C-1. And then you need to pass an address here, which I know is 48. But I'm not a magician. There's a simple like, uh, tool, which is called IC Detect. So if you just do something like this, it will show you, okay, there is something connected on the pin 48. And now, while I have these sensors, maybe I'll do something, right? Um, I'll spawn a function, and instead this function, I'll pass this little object, which will have sensors, and have sensors, and end. Cool, and now I have to define that loop. Um, sensors. Sensors, state, do, um, and okay. So now basically in this loop, I first of all, I want to make this wait for a little bit like before doing anything. So I just add a quick slip. And then I loop again on the state so that we always know that the app is doing this. As I said, I don't really know anything about Elixir nor Erlang, so this might be all wrong, but it turns out, like turns on the LED, so I'm happy. Um, <laughs> And, and also, I've cheated a little bit because uh, this, um, this chip is a little bit weird. So I had to um, get some of these, like basically the hardware specification of this. And I, I want to paste, Vim, you're amazing, thank you. And there's this little function I wrote just called read sensor. You just need to pin, like pass the pin. Uh, read sensor, and then you can do sensors. And then I know this is on the first channel because it says, um, AN0, right? And now I can say this is a value, and what we can do now is just to uh, print this value, right? So we can, uh, and now we run this again. Are the beams aligned? So it says 212, 117, 212, 160, it works. Okay, um, cool. So let's try to make this like more human friendly, right? And here, uh, when we know that the value is um, less than 180, um, do okay. Um, Io put as um, laser triggered, and then we say something like the value just for fun. And after that, we can just like uh, end, right? And we don't need to do this anymore. Cool. Um, actually, I, I need to do something else. So, because like now, like the, the app boots, but we don't really know this story. It didn't tell anything to the user. But now if I put my finger in it, these are triggered, these are triggered, and so on. So the little change I want to do is just um, in our source code, um, after we spawn this, I'll just print out um, intrusion countermeasures on, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this will be more important later, but, <laughs> 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 but, but, but anyway, okay. So I guess like, like uh, I've shown like how this works. So now I'll just add two more sensors. And one is a temperature sensor, and this is a noise sensor. So I'm just gonna happily like do my own like cable plugging for a second. So, Keith, anything to say? 
<laughs> this man's crazy. <laughs> Don't ever try and get into his house. <laughs> okay, okay. Actually, when I started doing this little project, my desk just, you know, I said Frankenstein because it's just like basically little pieces of like hardware lying around and all sort of things. Um, so this is the temperature sensor. Let's use the noise sensor. Um, also, just like in the unfortunate um, event that I fry the board, I have a spare board, yeah. so <laughs> should be good. Um, cool. So did I connect the right ones? Green, green, okay, cool. So uh, let me just go back to the code, and I'll do something that um, we like a lot. I'll just like copy-paste. So here I'll just like use uh, add loop state so that we shortcut um, the event. And here I'll do something like this. And here, uh, let's see, I want zero. I read from the first value. I know that this is something like um, 110, I think. Um, and here it's something like this. Um, and it won't be tr laser anymore. This will be the uh, temperature sensor, temperature and laser, and this will be noise triggered, okay? Oh, thank you. I need to change this to two, right? Yeah, cool. Um, it's much easier to program this way. <laughs> so, temperature triggered, oh no, there's something wrong. Oh, okay, I just need to invert that, so if it's slower than that. Um, let me try again. So, I thought, I don't know, let me try like, all this to be like this. Okay. So now I shouldn't complain anymore, I should say countermeasures, intrusion countermeasures on. And we have the temperature sensor here. If I start holding the sensor, well, it's triggered. <laughs> Come on. Uh, um, well, the noise works at least. That's good. I think the temperature, maybe the threshold is a little bit too high. So maybe we can just do um, temperature maybe 130. Uh, if this doesn't work, I'll just like try one more time. That's good. Um, oh, t now it's too low. Damn temperature sensors. Um, oh, is it, uh, did I do the opposite? Okay, thanks. I knew there was like an opposite somewhere. So what, should, what do you think I should do? <laughs> I'll do it. May, uh, like greater than? 120. 130. Hands up if you want 130. Yeah. Okay. okay. 130. So if this doesn't work, it's all your for. <laughs> um, okay. Let's try again. Nah. Temperature's always up. Um, no, I'm in the VIM. I could do that, I could try to do that. Um, so let me just uh, IO put test this value at all times. So at least like we have a consistent feedback of what's going on. I thought I got it, but apparently don't. Um, 127, when I don't touch it, it gets lower when I touch it. And also the noise triggers because I'm speaking, <laughs> but, which is good and the sensor works. Um, so if this is lower than, um, oh, yeah. Uh, if this is uh, lower than 120 temperature, no. It's just the value. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay. So one more time. I won't speak this. Oh, crap. <laughs> I thought I did all this like, uh, you know, like all this like when I was preparing the talk, but apparently it <laughs> wasn't like thorough enough. Um, okay, let's wait for the intrusion countermeasures on, cool. Laser, um, temperature, and, whoa, and the temperature is a, um, yes, the noise is working, cool. <laughs> But 
I mean, I, I know you guys are really excited, but what sort of <laughs> <laughs> what sort of alarm system doesn't have a beeper? Come on, <laughs> right? So I have a beeper here, and it uh, it's like really similar to the other sensors. So it has a ground and a, um, um, G a VCC uh, cable. So I'm just going to connect these two anywhere I want. And there is another pin which is being driven by the GPIO pin. So I just pin it to the 18. Uh, OK, cool. Gotcha. So now, basically, I just want to do uh, the very same thing I used to do before. So here, when I'm hooking up this laser, I also want to hook up um, a buzzer. And it will be on the pin 18. It will be still an output. I will turn it off by default uh, because well, that's how alarm works. And here's a buzzer. And now I need to include this thing to uh, the loop, right? So I just do buzzer, buzzer. And here I'll just do the same thing. And basically, every time I want to do, uh, like, there's an, an alarm, I just want to do this GPIO write uh, buzzer zero. Uh, no, zero. Yes, that's correct. I'm just going to quickly copy paste it everywhere. Uh, and here, in the case that like no sensor, uh, so no alarm triggered, we want to do this on a one. OK? So if I try this out, intrusion countermeasures on. I'm, I, don't, I don't know if you're, if you're hearing this. Let me try this. Maybe it's not the right <laughs> frequency, but it is working. Uh, well, if you're like really conscious about security, probably you can hear it, but if you're not, probably <laughs> don't. Um, anyway, um, so now we have a buzzer, like it does like all the right things. I also have a vibration sensor, but I don't know how much time I have left, so. Go on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just do the vibration sensor once more. And, and the, this vibration sensor is actually just a mercury switch, so just like a little piece of glass with like some a ball of a marker in it. So uh, when was, as soon as you like move it a little bit, it'll just like make contact and we'll say, okay, someone touched this thing. Um, and and uh, on the contrary of all the other things, this is a digital sensor because it just says on off. So it doesn't really need to have an analog output. So I just like simply connect this to the board. Um, and I do something like now this. Now you see why I said he's mad. What? Uh, 20, and I just connect, oh no, oh, sorry, the alarm is just like <laughs> catching me all the time. Um, so I'll connect it to 23, and I have it there, and if I go back into the uh, countermeasures, um, so here we, do, we want to do something really similar as, like this, and here we'll do a vibration, and we'll start a link on the 20, pin number 23, but in this case it will be an input, and I won't uh, set, like write anything to it. And here I'll do vibration, vibration, and here I'll do the same thing. Cool. Um, so I'll just do something, I'll put this uh, sensor read before the noise, because otherwise if someone vibrates, it will trigger the noise, the noise will trigger as well, you're just like, have this sort of like dependency in your alarm systems. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So basically, just do GPIO read vibration. Uh, maybe now instead of guessing, can just like print out the value, and I'll run it. And you should see it should, you should see like one. And as soon as I vibrate a little bit, you'll see zero. Well, and the other noise triggers, um, but. Um, now I know that the um, value is zero. So as soon as um, value equals equals zero, do, and I have to copy paste all this thing. Don't worry about that. Like in the version I pushed on GitHub, it has been properly refactored to a helper function. <laughs> it is just for educational purposes. Because um, I know it would irk me as well. So, um, so the temperature is called vibration. We don't really need the value, but I'll write it anyway. And uh, oh yeah, thank you. Um, let me try to again. 
So right buzzer vibrate. No, this is good, I think. Degree vibration, right buzzer. Where? That's okay. It should be good. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, try again. Mix. Now, if I shake this, whoa. Oh, vibration trigger. Yeah, it kind of works. <laughs> it's okay. Um, okay, cool. So now I'm just gonna, whoa, bye. <laughs> Is it working? I don't know. I just like this connection. <laughs> um, <laughs> do I have like five more minutes still? Uh, we, we probably need to... Uh, we don't? Yeah, we've probably got time for a couple of questions, but we need to get going. Sorry. Uh, that's fine. Uh, because uh, my plan was to show you that like this is actually running... like Everything you've seen up to this point has been running on in Raspbian, so Debian, basically. But I have the working like nerves thing. It just like takes one minute if everything goes okay, well. Go. Can I go? Yeah, cool. <laughs> So if I go to desktop countermeasures, I have everything prepared here. So I just open the countermeasures X. And um, can you please remind me what the values were? Uh, I've turned off the system, but hopefully we can just like copy them from somewhere. So um, I think uh, this was like 120. This was the same thing. And I think this was like higher for some reason. Uh, it was 160. Okay, let me just try. So now, like, basically, I've just, like, uh, when, if you just go to the NERVS project, you can just follow their tutorial, you can install NERVS, you can create a new project which uses NERVS, and as soon as you do that, you'll be able to do something like this, which is a compiling um, a firmware for a specific target, which in my case is a Raspberry Pi 2, and then you have another SD card, which I'll just, like, pop in. I'll just disconnect this other SD card. And now if you just do mix firmware burn, it will like flash this app. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work, don't worry about that. I think I got it. Oh no, okay, cool. Awesome. So now it flashed um, this uh, app to the SD card. And what's amazing about the NERVS project is they actually replaced the whole system D in Linux. So as soon as the kernel finishes the boot, you are straight into your Erlang app. Elixir app. So if I go back here, you see like now it's booting and we'll, you'll see that something countermeasures on, well, the laser now triggers and something, but the rest works. So, yeah.